Take this. Find them. Yo, what's going on, everybody? What's good with y'all? Y'all get in the comment section. Let me know who all's in here. Make sure you guys hit that like button for me. Hit that like button. Got a few things to talk about. A few things to talk about, man. Um, a lot of you guys already know. Um, your boy Josh Gaddis got fired. It is what it is. It is what it is. I ain't gonna lie to you guys. Um. I didn't expect them to get fired his first year, but with that performance, you know, that we had offensively, you know, I think it was like, it was bound to happen. It was bound to happen. So, yeah, this is out. Um, a lot of rumors that's floating around that saying he might go to Iowa and stuff like that. So, we'll see. I, I mean, I'll keep an eye on and see where he ends up, you know, if he gets another job or whatever. Also keep an eye on, you know, if we got to buy them out, pay them this, pay them that, that kind of thing. I'll get you guys that information whenever it's available. But, yeah, man, Josh Gaddis is gone. You know, candidates, candidates, candidates. Names are popping up all over the place. Some names more reasonable, some names fantasy. But, you know, it is what it is. Everybody got their own their own thoughts and opinions on who they think should be the new offensive coordinator. But, you know, y'all can put those in the comment section too. Um, y'all go ahead and um, get in the comment section. I know this, this live is pretty much um, random, so didn't really put it out that I was going live or anything like that. So, you know, people will start trickling in as they, they see it or if YouTube decide to, you know, send out notifications and stuff like that. But anyways, man, a lot been going on college football. A lot been going on, you know, off season, the shenanigans, you know, all fan base needs something to do. And a lot been coming through. Um, I'm on Twitter here. I saw this. So I see I got a lot of Gator fans on the channel. So I guess I'll just present this to y'all, you know. But uh, what if uh, Florida had black jerseys? Now, it's, it's, a, it's amazing to me that Florida has not had black jerseys yet. It's amazing. I, I thought they would have been done it, but they got like these are just ideas. These are like four, three, three different ideas that they came up for the black jerseys. I mean, not a Florida fan, not not too fond of them, but you know these look cool. They look cool or whatever. Then you got it in um, I guess instead of orange, they got them in blue numbers, blue and white or whatever. Those are all right. And then they changed the the helmet to blue instead of um orange. So. I, I guess, you know, these are fans, you know, fantasy jerseys or whatever. I mean, they don't look too bad. I mean, but then again, black jerseys don't ever look bad. Um, anyways, I'm going to put the link in the chat, too, because I don't want this to be about me today. You know, I want to give you guys give you guys the floor to talk about Josh Gaddis, what it means for Miami. Um, if you're going to present a candidate, if you're going to present a candidate, at least give why. Why this candidate? What has he done? You know, what makes you believe that, you know, he would succeed at Miami? Can you recruit? All that good stuff. You know, what's his background? What's his resume looking like? You guys can let me know about that. Um, the link is in the chat, like I said, for anybody that wants to come on and join in on the conversation. Y'all can let me know, is Miami wrong for firing Josh Gaddis so early? Um, also, what kind of message is Miami sending by firing, you know, Josh Gaddis so early? Is this a turnoff for other um, top candidates at, uh, you know, offensive coordinator position out there in college football or even in the NFL atmosphere? You guys can um, let me know how you feel on it. But, yeah, Josh Gaddis is gone. 
I know to a lot of people today when it happened, it's like breaking news and this, that, and the third. For me, for me and for anybody that subscribed to this channel, you knew that this was not nothing new. You knew for weeks now, for a while now that, you know, this was going to happen, you know. As far as I got, as soon as I got, you know, confirmation that it had happened and it will happen, I told you guys, and then a lot of you guys question, you know, question my sources or whatever, or you guys were telling me that you didn't see anybody else, um, you know, putting it out there. So now, now everybody's putting it out there. I got dragged, man. I got dragged. When I dropped that video a couple of days ago, I got dragged on Facebook. It was always like, oh, man, you can't believe this YouTube vloggers and all that kind of stuff. Everybody got sources and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I got. Oh, man, look at Florida. See the jokes? The jokes sell themselves. This is what I see every day, guys. This is what I see. Look at Florida. Look at this. Florida Florida fans, Florida fans, Gator fans. I need an explanation for this. I need an explanation for this. Is this what y'all doing to them recruits? Is this what y'all doing to them recruits up there? Y'all literally got this man with a beach towel, a cooler, some, some stuff to play in the sand. Y'all even got fake sand on the ground and a beach background. A shitty beach background at that. You y'all didn't even um make sure the thing was straight so you couldn't see the wrinkles in the man. My God, Florida Gators, y'all need to do better. Y'all need to do better. How y'all got all them women on y'all staff? Them beautiful ladies and none of them don't know how to iron. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> That's tough right there, man. So Florida out here faking it. Faking the beach. What are they going to tell recruits, man? Y'all come to Florida. Don't worry about nothing that they saying. We're going to bring a beach to Florida. We're going to bring a beach. Right now, this is just a dream in the background. This is just a dream. We're going to bring it to reality. Manifest it. <laughs> oh, boy, I got a fake beach. My God. My God. Man. This is a cry. This, this is a cry for help. This is a cry for help. Y'all check in on the recruits up in Florida, man. This has got to be a cry for help. My goodness. Oh, man. All right, so some top six. I'm telling you guys, these stuff is going to be coming out, man. Shout out to uh, Rasta, Rasta Edits. But I'm telling you, these um <laughs> these candidates for the, um, for the OC job, they're going to start popping up. So some of these guys I can recognize. Some of them might have to be like, yeah, who is that? I know that's Joe Brady. I know that's Dan Mullen, um, Scott. Uh, the rest of them, they don't look too familiar. But if I saw the, saw the names, I'd probably be like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. But, yeah, man, yeah, man. Offensive coordinators, a lot of candidates. Like, I, um, if you watched the video from earlier, you saw that basically Miami um, – some of the some of the writers, the beat writers, they put out their list. Slim Shady Kane, what's going on with you, boss? Man, I, I know we were talking about getting together and, and, and going to watch the the Miami Florida game in twenty four. I ain't sitting with you. You gonna keep on <laughs> fucking with these Florida fans? I'm not getting jumped just because I'm sitting with you. <laughs> Listen, man, you gonna have to fight off some baby lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so they brought the beach. Usually they bring the beach to Florida. Well, I mean, there ain't no beach in Gainesville, so they got to pretend. All right, so I was talking to the Florida State fans earlier, and I'm letting them know, listen, it's only January. They were already bragging about having a number three class in the country for 2024. 2023 ain't even hardly over yet. The recruiting classes for 2023 is not even done yet. They're already bragging about their class being number three. Need I remind you, once other guys start, you know, picking out their schools, start committing, you will not be number three in the country. Probably 33 in the country. 
So Florida State fans, slow your roll now. Slow your roll. I know y'all ain't win, ain't had a winning season in a long time. And I know it feels good and you want to jump and claim the natty and everything like that. But slow down. Slow down. Please don't provide I mean, me all, all the um trolling material that I need. I mean, at least keep it in some semblance of reality. Brag about the fact that you got the number two transfer portal class. You can brag about that. That's okay. It's something. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Miami Flo. They <laughs> say, are you happy now? What's, what's, what's your thoughts on the Josh Gaddis situation? Uh, well, exactly what you think it would be. I don't think they should have fired anybody year one, including him. Nah, I, it seems like it was a disconnect with um, Gaddis. Now, I agree with you. Firing somebody in the first year is like, eh, you know, especially with all the problems that we had injury-wise, team-wise, and everything like that. But, well, even take a step beyond that. Take out the injuries. Take out the team problems. They had been running an RPO for two years. Now you come over to what's basically, you know, the modern day pro style offense. Those are two very, very, very different offenses. So I don't know why anybody would be surprised if they had trouble with it. No, I do think Mario's um his offense this year probably gonna be similar to Gaddis, but probably a lot easier to run. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I find funny. Like if people throwing around, you know, Dan Mullen or Cliff Kingsbury or, or people like that. I'm like, he's not gonna come in. He's not gonna. I don't see him bringing somebody in to run something totally different than what we were running. Yeah, if it's not similar or it's, or it's not run heavy, I don't think that whoever them candidates are, I think you guys could just like throw them away. I don't even well, necessarily think it was run heavy. Because Gaddis wasn't. I mean, it was almost a straight down the middle 50-50 split between run and pass. I think that's probably one of the reasons he got fired. Like, he couldn't establish the run or he, he couldn't he, he couldn't utilize our terrible offensive line to its maximum, basically. <laughs> so he, you, what you mean is he, he couldn't make uh, chicken salad out of chicken shit. Yeah, pretty much, you know. Or chicken oh, well, God. I mean, I don't blame him for that. I ain't never seen nobody, you know, turn water into wine. I mean, supposedly somebody did it once, but. But, uh, uh -oh, we got another Josh Gaddis. Um, to, say, to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out. He's fired. <laughs> He's fired. <laughs> Yo. Son of a bitch off the field. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, Montre? Cooler, cooler. Hey, Montre, did you donate the Mike Norville helicopter for him? Man, that's why I came here, man. Why you why you going off on my nose like that, bro? <laughs> bro, I I didn't do it, man. I just I just decided to go on Twitter and I saw the helicopter and I'm like, oh shit, I could afford that. <laughs> I might, yeah. I might want to take my girl up to tell her to get her a little cheap helicopter ride and be a hero on, for her. <laughs> it's just going high, going to high school to high school, bro. I ain't like nothing like that. Oh, no, hey, I I'll heard, give. I just heard I a give, little buzzing sound. Was that the helicopter? <laughs> I give Florida State this much credit. They ain't bouncing NIL checks like Florida is. Yeah, well, hey, at least. I mean, they embarrassed themselves a little bit in NIL, but not to the extreme as Florida. Yeah, Florida went hey. all out. Oh, the helicopter just came back. <laughs> and what's <laughs> bad about Florida, instead of donating to the collective, you got people starting from GoFundMe's to buy out Billy Napier's contract. Oh, snap. Mike Norvell is landing as we speak. It sounded like it. Montreal, why are you doing them like that, man? Dang, that boy came in here trolling Mike Norvell, and he a Florida State fan. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that boy said, land the plane. I'm at the helicopter. I'm at Tonka Toy. I'm at Hot Wheels. 
<laughs> and enough about us. What about y'all, man? Y'all in these these OCs, bro. Y'all, this y'all third OC in three years. What this, is, what the, is this new? The, the one he hires will be number five in six years. My God, God damn. And, and, and I think T2Y hit the nail right on the head. Who the hell's going to want to come here when That's you got a track record like that? That's crazy as shit, bro. That's crazy. I think I think Josh Josh um, Gaddis should give back his um, his boys award like, you know, Reggie Bush did with the Heisman Trophy. He probably, you know. I think he should give it back. I don't think he earned it. I'm starting to believe that. I'll, I'll put some money down and he makes Miami look foolish just like Dan Enos did. Oh, Dan Enos, Dan Enos back over there in um, the SEC now. He's back over there in Arkansas. Yep. That boy, that was, took him a while, but, you know, he he doing his thing. He had a hell of an mm-hmm. offense in Maryland. Shit, he they gave Ohio himself. State all they wanted. I still can't believe oh, BB in the building. BB, what's going on? What's up, bro? You got to kill, you gotta kill the music, BB. Hey, hi, hi, hi. Yeah, yeah. Man. BB trying to get this man a copyright strike. That's messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Music, we can still hear it. Oh, there you go. Okay, go on now. BB. I, yeah, I need, I need you to answer me a question, BB. What that is? What month is this? <laughs> January. It's January. Yeah. Why, are we, why are we doing these recruiting games in January for 2024? That's you. <laughs> <laughs> That's you me about you. It's crazy because you told me about your little running back commit. And then all of a sudden, uh, now I see now I see Kirby don't park the helicopter to come see him. And now I see Mario don't park the helicopter to come see him. I think you might want to slow down on him. Tansy, I don't blame him. Tansy good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I early know commit, but you know most of the yeah. time the early commits, you don't want that. Yeah, we got some other people people like more than him, but I like him though. He's good though. What happened with you guys picking up that two star running back from Tulane, man? What's up with that? Nah, that, that, that oh, was look. Just oh, look. See, see, I ain't even doing that. And he already on the side right here. Cheney, y'all running back popped up on the side. Mario don't visit him, not even me. I should be following him. That's tough. He right there on Palm Beach. That's crazy right there. Oh, is that him, Mario? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Mama look like a movie star. I can't. I can't put my my finger on her though. That one lady. I know who you talking about. Playing on um, Tyler Perry movies and um, yeah. She always playing somebody's mama in movies. She played a love basketball too. Oh, okay. Come so four on, star. Oh, no. Nice and not late than mama. <laughs> Uh, four-star running back, Florida Gator commit. Um, he's from Port St. Lucie. Mm-hmm. But he in Palm Beach, though. He played for, uh, dang, what's that team? Um, Kaya Hila played for. Let's see what the hurdle, what the hurdle looking like. Oh, he can't find it. Oh, they can't find his hurdle. Damn, yeah, that's tough. Oh, he got a hurdle, though. Yeah, I clicked on it. They gave me a. Uh, they can't find it. Yeah, sorry, I can't like, find that page. Looks like it's been deleted. You may not have wanted that to get out to the public. Yeah, well, it was already out. He a, he's a bruiser. Okay, he's well, a, he, he, a got a little, he got a little video on him, so we'll watch that. So yeah, start that. All right, so there you go, right there. At least he got the video on the thing. Yeah. Okay. I see why Mario going to get him. Yeah, he already committed him. Okay, little speed stuff. I see him. 
That team, that team looked like a bunch of poor little teammates. I ain't gonna lie to you. Everybody, he taller than everybody on their defense. <laughs> well, he and your nigga the wood. <laughs> yeah, see the competition he playing against. They all look small. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what the, what level he is. Okay. Yeah, he, like I said, he fast. He fast, yeah. but it's competition. Damn. He was quick. I, uh, yeah, you got to look at his. I don't know why they took his hood off. That, that was huge. Hey, evasive, too. Very evasive. Yeah, he a bit bad that can move. Yeah, so I see why Mario about to take him from Billy. Hey, go ahead. Y'all have, I like okay. him more than Billy. Y'all can take Kirby out here on him, too. Because he fit. He fit Georgia world. Shoot. Sure. I, I, got, I got a question for you, BB. Mm -hmm. are, are you donating to the Florida Gators Collective? Or are you donating to the GoFundMe to buy out Billy's contract? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <They're glad though. laughs> they buying out Billy's contract. Do it. I ain't saying they're going to, but they damn sure set up a GoFundMe and had like $1,200 in it. Yeah, that's as much as they going to get. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. I wonder where that, how far did that GoFundMe go? How much money did that get? I, I think, know, though, I I think know, if, Billy, if Billy don't work out, I don't think y'all getting another Sunbelt guy. I'm like, it, well, here's the thing. If they had donated that $1,200 to the NIL collective, that check to Jake Rashada might not have bounced. Yep. But I, mean, so I don't know exactly how, sh how short they were. I ain't all up in Florida's business like that. That wasn't the thing. That boy say retire mama. That's the plan. Yeah, man. A lot of top candidates coming through. A lot of top top prospects coming through. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna pull up the um the 247 sports. Um, you know, they'll have most of the guys that Miami sent offers out to. We've been sending out a lot of offers, especially for 2024. So you guys could, you know, get a a visual of who we are they're trying to get who we don't offer I think with my with what I can say about um the difference between Mario and um and Manny Mario will recruit a kid all the way down to the end with Manny if Manny don't think we got a shot or he don't want to he really don't want to battle with the big guys you know the Georgias the Alabamas and everything he'll move on from them Mario will, do, will recruit a kid down to the end, even if he don't come to mind. So, I think that's a good thing, though, because in the future, you know, with the way transfer border work nowadays, some of those guys, you know, they'll be a good fit for us later. Somebody else just trained them, I guess. Yeah, I'm about to say that that could be a good thing. I mean, it could be a double-edged sword because you could, you know, put some effort into a guy that, you're just kind of wasting your time where you could have been putting your effort in over here and gotten this guy instead. All right, count down, count down to the ACC um, football um, schedule release continues. That was two days ago they posted it. So on um, the 30th, so on the 30th, guys, uh, Miami's full ACC schedule will be out. As you guys know, we already got the um, – the first four non-con games, Miami, Miami of Ohio, Texas A&M, Bethune, Cookman, and what's the other one? Um, Temple. Those games are already set. Time, not time, but um, dates. Those dates are already set. The order that we play our ACC schedule, you guys will find out on the 30th at 7, 7 p.m. So at 7 p.m. ACC Network. You'll find out when um, the schedules, you know, what the dates we're going to play, like Florida State, Clemson, and all of those guys, Boston College, Louisville. 
they start that three three five schedule in this year, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So that that schedule will be out. They'll be talking about it on on the thirtieth, seven p.m. at night. Um, I might do a live show. Might do a live show. Talk about that Florida State and Miami schedule. Yeah, man. So it's it's the Josh Gaddis drama has come to an end, just like the um, just like the what you call it drama, the Kamani McLean drama. We've been we've been having a, a couple drama series going on over the um, over the past couple of weeks. Kamani going to um, Colorado, go play for Dion. Um, Josh Gaddis haven't been spotted for weeks. Finally got fired today. Well, announced today. They've been fired. Um, Miami got, you know, everybody and their moms right now making a fantasy list of um, offensive coordinators that probably don't make no sense at all. Probably come, probably just throwing out some good names with a big old buyout behind them. <laughs> You know how that be slim. You see somebody put a fantasy name on them. Then you go go check the guy out, and you see he's in a four year contract somewhere, and they're paying them this that amount of dollars that you got to pay now. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah, you can go ahead and cross him off the list. <laughs> well, like I said, just a lot of the names that I've seen thrown about, it's not the style of offense that obviously Mario wants to run. So I think people just aren't being realistic with who he's going to hire. Now, let me ask you this. Because I, I know it's a troll going around about hiring Willie Tack. How would you feel if Miami hired Willie Tack? Um, Willie Taggart is an offensive coordinator I don't have a problem with. There are several guys that were terrible head coaches that I would hire as a coordinator in a heartbeat. What about um Dan Mullen? I, I'd sure as shit hire him. I mean, my only problem with him is obviously Dan Mullen doesn't like to recruit. Yeah, but that's my, I, I think that's my problem with Joe Brady too. I think that there's enough A plus recruiters on this staff to make up for it. Another another um narrative that I've been hearing people have been throwing around the Bills possibly firing um Ken Dorsey. And Miami pick him up. Um, I well, number one, I don't think the Bills are going to fire him. I think that would be foolish. The Bills had a good season. Um, and number two, if, if these you know quote unquote writers with inside sources are to be believed, um, Mario contacted Ken Dorsey before he hired Josh Gaddis, and Dor and Dorsey turned him down. Yeah. I mean, like I said, with the, with the Bills situation, I know they said, um, I think their general manager said that basically everybody's on evaluation right now. So who knows? Let's just let's just throw it out there for for whatever. Um, I mean, he he's mostly been in college. I mean, in in the pros with his coaching. So you may have the same problem with Dorsey that you got with Dan Mullen. He may not want to recruit. Yeah. Some guys but, just don't like that. But it is something to think about. If he, if he, let's just say the Bills do, do get rid of him. You know, what's the chance of Miami landing him, or you know, would he just, you know, stay in the NFL and probably get another job there? That'd be an, I, another interesting situation. I wouldn't want him as an OC. I'm sorry, it just one year. He was an offensive coordinator for one year. There just there ain't enough experience there. Oh, by William said, Dan, Dan Mullen wife can do the recruiting. <laughs> God damn. Hey, you get hey, that's a double, that's a double prize right there. You get Dan that, Mullen's offense or you get his wife to recruit. She makes up for the recruiting that he don't do. Hire Dan Mullen. <laughs> that might work out right there. That's not logical. <laughs> that's not logical as hell. What's the next? I know with Gaddis, I've been hearing the Iowa situation that he might end up at Iowa. Might go back up there in the Big Twelve. But let's just say Iowa doesn't need a um Josh Gaddis. Is there any any school that his kind of offense would fit? I mean, there's a lot of teams this year that run his offense. 
I mean, it, it he would fit right in at LSU. They run the same offense. Uh, he'd fit right in at Alabama. They run the same offense. That's, I was thinking about Alabama, too, because I was like, I know Nick Saban, um, they just lost um, Bill O'Brien to the NFL again. Yeah. He's going back to the Patriots. So that's an that's a That's a very real possibility. He's been on Saban's staff before. Yeah, plus with the, the athletes that Alabama already have, Josh Gaddis' offense probably would thrive right away. He would well, have that the pieces there, in place already. That he would have the pieces, and it's – I mean, it, it – one of the reasons I think Nick Saban is able to go through coordinators like he does, look at their last few offensive coordinators. They're all running basically the same system. So – that's one of the reasons, like I said earlier, I thought that we were going to have trouble this year because you're changing up the offense so drastically. I, I think it would have worked out a whole lot better if he had hired a guy that was going to run the RPO like Lashley did, but that's not what he wants. So you got to deal with, uh, you know, the shit year or two of, of uh, installing a whole new offense. Uh, what do you guys think about Graham Harrell? Um Graham, Graham Harrell, wasn't he the guy that was over at USC at one point? I, ever since he left USC, I don't think I followed his career. I haven't followed him for a while either. I mean, uh, I, I, what has he done lately other than USC? Um, Probably, you know, elaborate on that. But what kind of offense is he running to? Is it like a spread? Is it a pass? If it's if it's heavily on the passing, he's not coming to mind. Because my m- Mario's not trying to run an offense that's heavily passing the ball. He wants to establish the run. He want, he wants to run a balanced offense. Is what is kind of what Gaddis showed me this year. Is what Mario wants to run. And I'm gonna be honest. I kind of prefer it. I, I, I like a, a fairly even balance between run and pass. Yeah, I, I, I figured Gaddis was going to be gone when we couldn't get no receivers to commit here. None of the top receivers wanted to come here. And a lot of them was very vocal that they don't like his um his route concepts. So, and, and, that, and that's something I've heard a lot of people, even before he came in, that his offense can tend to be overly complicated. It's kind of like the first year when we had Enos. You know, his plays took a little bit time to develop, and plus the players didn't really know it. So, you know, if he, if if given a chance and, you know, have these guys in his system maybe two, three years, we'll probably see a, a difference. But I don't think Mario – I don't think he, he he I don't think he want to go through them them five and seven seasons for for too long. But here's the problem: that's how all teams are built. Yeah, but I mean, it, it just was, it, it is what it is. That's one thing that hasn't changed is how championship teams are built. Uh, and but you know, with Miami, we already um, when we winning the the stadium is pretty much almost empty. So imagine when we lose and how much more emptier that shit's going to be. <coughs> and I think that's that's the thing, too. When you're getting paid so much, you know, you got to make it up in all those revenues. So if you can't yeah, well, win games, I, I think, most fans are not going to come to sit there and, and watch you lose. They ain't going to be buying beer. Oh, I, I get that, but I think the, the university also realizes that it's not – 1989 anymore, and they're not going to sell out every home game in Miami. But those days are dead, and I don't think they're ever coming back. I mean, 20 years ago, they couldn't sell out every home game. I don't know what makes people think they're going to now. They <laughs> say so y'all going to fire the new, a, new OC next year. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Oh, man. You know why? And I'll tell you why. This pissed a bunch of people off. I can already give you a record prediction for next year. Man, that's a hell of a plate right there. So you're paying $25 for this plate. Can you see that plate? I'll pay $25 for that plate. I'll definitely pay $25 for that. 
Hell, I'll give them a five dollar tip too. Yeah, that's that looks dope, <laughs> man. That's crazy. Ain't no way in hell you finding that for twenty five dollars. Yeah, but Dennis, man, Dennis bites the dust. Like I said, yeah. I think the hardest problem he's fixing to have, and and, and I'm not even joking, is finding somebody that's even going to be willing to come. See that Florida State? Let me turn the sound off. That's a real helicopter, Florida State fan. That's not an RC. You see that big boy chopper? That's not an <laughs> RC. <laughs> That's not an RC with a remote control. That's a big boy right there. That's how we come in there. Mike Norville got to got to sit real tight, put his arms together, and hit a little chopper. <laughs> claustrophobic. If you're claustrophobic, you do not want to ride with Mike Norville. But I knew Norville like little toys because when he first came up there, he had a slingshot. Everybody pulling out Lamborghinis and all kind of stuff, and he he came out with a slingshot. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Mike Norville, a little chopper. Mm, mm, mm. A little Tonka toy. What'd he do? Build that in his garage? Man, probably came with assemblies and a little note on how to put it together. Yeah, see, Mario's helicopter landing everywhere. Everybody's posting their little videos. Real helicopter landing. Um, Cougar Nation, whichever school this is, um, Cougars. So that's all. Uh, oh, that's Palm Beach. That's Palm Beach. Palm Beach Central. Man, it, that'd be a 10 minute Uber ride, but he's just trying to show out flying a helicopter over there. Uh, it makes sense, though, to ride the helicopter because if you think about it, you leave from Miami, you come here, you go to uh, all the schools around the area. It it, it, it makes sense to beat out all the traffic. Oh, it does. Like, I, I agree with that. Yeah, because around in the morning time, because th this is like six hours ago. In the morning time, 95 is heavy. The turnpike is heavy. It's always that one idiot that caused an accident that set you back, so... You know, helicopters landing everywhere, guys. Nobody in sight with a remote control. <laughs> uh, man, let's see what Billy talking about. That's Friday. I heard that. That's Friday. I heard that. Okay. <laughs> man. I guess that's all he heard. Okay, what the hell did that go? Um, another kid with a uh, wait, Miami didn't offer him. Who is this kid? Um, Taylor, what is he? He's a 24 guy, six, six foot 200, um, uh, running back slash athlete, four star. Okay. Uh, Miami didn't offer him. He got offers from Florida, Florida State. I mean, Florida didn't offer him either. And everybody of, else did, though. Yeah, he's out of Texas. Alabama offered Arkansas, Auburn, Georgia. Shoot. He got plenty of offers. Tennessee, the whole SEC done offered him. Now, who do you think they're going to hire to be the wide receivers coach? My thing is, are they going to hire similar the way they, they did with Gaddis, where they have him as the OC and wide receiver coach? Because if that's the case, you could just go ahead and start looking at wide receivers coach that could possibly be OCs. But if we're going to hire an OC and um offensive coordinator, I meant hire a wide receiving coach also, then that's a, that's a sticky situation. Because I don't, I don't think we would have the, that kind of room on the staff to do so, because you only got 10. 
Somebody's. Well, yeah, but the Frank Ponce left. I mean, your your coordinator is is also a coach for whatever position group. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, how you a uh, offensive coordinator that coaches quarterbacks? The majority of them do. I mean, you've got a fair amount of exceptions, but and I mean, because some you... of them, some of them do like Kevin Steele did. You know, Mario hired the guys that he wanted on defense, and Kevin Steele has coached pretty much every position on the defense, so he just fit himself in what Mario didn't hire. Um, David says, uh, "One an OC that knows how that knows." How to use the tight end in the pass the ball um, 60% of the time. Pass the ball 60% of the time. I think with Mario, you're going to run it at least 50 uh, 50. Just lost Slim. Slim, uh, the links in the chat. Yeah, I think Mario wants to run the ball at least 50 50. But I'm not opposed to 60% passing the ball. I'm not opposed to it. Especially if you utilize the the wires, the um the tight ends at least ten percent of those passes each game or whatever, you know, let them eat too. I, I'm not trying to pick on this comment, but did they not watch any games? Will Mallory is one of the leading receivers, yeah, despite all the crap he dropped. Yeah, not to mention he came back for shit. <laughs> no, he can't. <laughs> But it's also, I mean, it's like it was the year before when you got to leave your tight ends back there to block and your running backs back there to block because the offensive line can't do it. What are you supposed to do? Now, speaking of Will Mallory, I've seen uh, an NFL mock draft pick, whatever. They had him going at, like, pick number 165. So they do have him getting drafted. I'm sure he'll get drafted, uh, but they expect you to block in the NFL. Yeah, and I seen um they're saying that DJ Ivy is one of the standouts at I think the recess senior thing practice. Oh, the senior bowl. Yeah, so he's doing pretty well out there, but he you know he's always been a practice warrior. <laughs> I mean, I I I I hope he has a great future ahead of him. I really do, because uh, he sure didn't show his potential at Miami. <laughs> This perfect. This photo right here sums up Florida State fans perfectly. Now they're telling us that class, the class rankings didn't matter, but now that they're ranked number three on um, the twenty-four one, they're they're talking about class rankings and how it matters. <laughs> <laughs> the, the level of pettiness. Man, you gotta love the internet. I'm for real. You gotta love it. Remember when we went to the Cheesy Bowl and they was clowning us? Oh, y'all going to the Cheesy Bowl? Ain't nothing. Y'all happy about the Cheesy Bowl? Next thing you know, they're in the Cheesy Bowl and it's the best bowl in the world. <laughs> Man, the way the, the way the tides have turned. If Miami doesn't win eight games next year, Mario will be on the hot seat. Um, uh, well, number you know. one, he won't be on the hot seat. And number two, we're probably going to lose eight games next year. Say so what about Stevenson? I haven't heard anything on him. He should do pretty well in the uh, in the draft. I think. I, think, I think, he will. Yep, I think I heard that he was actually a second rounder, if I'm not mistaken. But it's been a minute. That sounds about right. I I, I figured. Maybe, maybe late second round. I could see him possibly the the early of the third. But when is the combine? That's a good question. Not a good question. Who do you think going to the Super Bowl? Who do you think gonna play in that game? Uh, I've got a feeling it's gonna be a rematch. It's gonna be uh, Kansas City versus San Fran, and San Fran's gonna get the dub this time. They get their revenge. It's odd, but I I kind of want um I want the Eagles to win the Super Bowl for one reason and one reason only, and I'm only being petty. I want to watch Oklahoma and Alabama fans fight over Jalen Hurts. 
That's what I want. I want. I want to see the Eagles win so they them two fan base could fight over who who Jalen Hurts represent. Well, I see. I don't want the Eagles to win because fuck the Eagles because I'm a Tampa Bay fan, and that there's some bad blood there. Mm. I mean, hey, I'm still the Super Bowl champion until the Super Bowl is played. So I'm still going to enjoy my little moment. I can still call myself a champion right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, um, I could see 49ers being there. I could also see the Eagles being in there. The Bengals and um, Chiefs, that's a that's a tough one, too. I want the Bengals to lose because there's somebody I want to talk shit to when they lose. That's the only reason I want them to lose. Man, and I'm not even going to talk about them. Sorry, uh, Dolphins. <laughs> but the, but they made the playoffs. Or them or them Cowboys. Yeah, man. <laughs> they still post. They still talking about the um the Florida edit. I still can't believe these boys faking being at the beach up in Florida. They even brought sand. They, you know, you had to go out of your way. To make a scenery, when you actually brought sand to make the scenery, they you brought some from Home Depot. They bought three bags. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> do they not know the trolls are watching? You see, you could you could see the wrinkles in the sheets, man. The green screen behind them, you could see the wrinkles. No, there ain't no wrinkles in it. No. There's, oh my God! I wish you could zoom in on Twitter. It actually made it worse. Oh, okay, so I zoomed in on my phone now. I can see it. Come on! They didn't even iron out. You got all those females on staff, and you couldn't iron out. You could get one of them to iron. Not not one female up there know how to iron. Man, that's tough. Oh, oh they're gonna cancel me now. They're gonna say I'm sexist. They're going to say T2Y saying females should be out here ironing clothes. <laughs> but they ain't Florida. Now, you can see all the wrinkles in that thing, man. It's like you're going to an interview and your white, you know, dress-up shirt's all wrinkled up and shit. Man. That's, that's crazy. Oh, man. Um, here at in the in in Lake Grove um, High School, I want to thank the University of uh, Miami, Florida State, Pitt, and um, Charlotte for stopping by recruiting our athletes. Uh, shout out to Richard Jackson. That's my classmate. That's um, what you call it? Um, that's one of my classmates right there. He's the coach over there in Boca. So I guess Miami's recruiting in um, Inlet. Groove. He said baby lizards went all out with this one. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, totally not depressed. Oh, change it. Oh, it's nah, still totally not depressed. Big Jacks. You mean Jackson State? <laughs> uh, I Jackson don't like Bill saying. State. Nah, nah. Just, I, I'll say Jackson State to get him because, you know, they they irrelevant. The Gamecocks was pretty much irrelevant ever since Dion got to Jackson State. They the real, they the real JSU. <laughs> that, that wasn't very nice, sir. Oh man. Say citizen is is Michael Carter slash um Javante Williams if healthy. Yeah, the running back position for Miami this year. Who's gonna be that guy? Who is going to be that guy? You got Henry Parrish coming back. Um, Don Chaney might be healthy. He can't stay healthy to save his life. Um, Travante Citizen, he should be healthy. Then we got Chris Johnson came in. Mark Fletcher came in. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle. I mean, I think if Cheney's healthy, there ain't going to be much of a battle. If Cheney's healthy, yeah. that's 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 the big if. 
Cheney came in two plays this season and got hurt. After all that time of recovering from his well, no, he got hurt. He got hurt in twenty one, and then he got hurt in the spring coming into this season. And yeah. then he it, came it in wasn't, wasn't ready to go until like the last couple of games of the year. And then he got in those games and got hurt after two plays. I thought they just took him out. I didn't know he got hurt again. No, he got hurt again. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know if we can trust Cheney when it comes to injuries. That's um, not, I mean, I hate it for him. But, I mean, it, uh, Frank Gore was the same way. They said, um, what would be realistic NFL hire at OC for Miami? Um I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know which NFL OCs would be available and would run the style of offense that Mario would like. Most and, of And, you know, are their contract, you know, worth buying out kind of thing. Well, here's the thing, though. <clears throat> Whoever he hires from the NFL, I mean, that's the – what Gaddis was running is the prominent offense in the NFL. None of the fan base wants that. So if they hire somebody from the NFL, everybody's just going to be pissed off. Yeah, I talk to the people, Slim. Give me like two minutes. All right, I'll see what I can do. Man, what we got? They don't iron clothes in Gainesville? Well, that is tough. Ball up. Quote T2I. I mean, as far as guys that are looking to leave the NFL, I don't know. Because you don't have you don't have a whole lot that go to the NFL and want to come back to college. Like a lot of people have thrown around Joe Brady's name, but Joe Brady has kind of made it clear that he doesn't want to come back to college. He wants to stay in the NFL. So you don't always have guys that are willing to make that jump from one to the other. Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of people would tank Leonard Hankerson, but is he going? Is he going to come? be a wide receiver and coach in college for half the amount of money that the 49ers are paying him. That That's the problem with, with – because I've heard somebody – I don't remember who it was. I was watching somebody's show this morning, and somebody threw out uh, Reggie Wayne because he spent one year uh, as a wide receiver coach for the Colts. And I'm like, well, number one, I want somebody that's got more than a year's experience. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give him a promo and give him the... You talking about giving Leonard Hankerson the, the OC job? You smoking dope and dog food. You want a guy that's never been an OC before. You want him to come have his first offensive coordinator job ever at Miami? Yeah, I don't think so. Like I said, I don't have a problem with somebody like Beard or Hankerson as a wide receiver coach. They've both proven they can do that. And especially when it comes to Kevin Beard, I mean, he's considered one of the better recruiters in college football today. Oh, I know. I know. Hankerson's been with the with the Forty ers for a while. That doesn't mean he's ready to be an offensive coordinator. I 
I wouldn't have a problem with Byron Leftwich. I'm gonna be honest because I, I think he was he was kind of scapegoated this year because, well, I'm a Tampa Bay fan, and sitting there looking at the team, to me, Byron Leftwich was scapegoated for the problems that that team was having. Oh, I get, I get your point, Studio One, that everybody's got to start somewhere. But all you hear from the Miami fan base constantly is go learn to do it somewhere else and then come here. But see, I, I think the problem, I don't know what Tampa was paying him, to be honest. Uh, but I think the problem you're going to have with Leftwich is, you know, he runs that, he runs that same offense um, that Bruce Arians runs. And that's not what Mario's looking to do. I, at least in my opinion, I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to find somebody that runs a system similar to Gaddis. Oh, I am back. Oh, man, what are they talking about? Um, I'm talking about some OCs like Byron Leftwich, who just got let go by Tampa. Um, now, Studio One, I, I think, bumped his head there for a second because he said something about, well, Leonard Hankerson knows Shanahan's offense, so hire him and make him the offensive coordinator. I mean – I get everybody got to have their start somewhere, but most Miami fans aren't happy with somebody learning to be a coordinator at Miami. Yeah, that's crazy. Here's another name being thrown out there for you. Uh, Marcus Herrero. Uh, we'll bring on. Um, wait, what? Is they saying that he's going to be? Uh, opinion, opinion. That's an opinion. He's like Marcus. Um, Marcus Herrero is going to be the next um, offensive coordinator of the Miami Hurricanes. Herrero would bring um, offensive coordinator NFL and head coaching experience to Coral Gables. So that's that's another guy you guys might want to um, read up on. This is um, stateoftheu.com that's putting that out. It is listed as an opinion, though, but they're saying um, Marcus Herrero. So that's a guy. Where, where go is to. he at? Ole Miss? They're saying. Um, well, I'm just, I'm reading what's on his shirt. And that's all, I mean, that's all I come up with is Ole Miss is because it says Rebs. Reds, um, probably UNLV. Well, maybe, yeah. It may be UNLV. I didn't even think about that. Let's see. Let's Google this guy. Let's get the wiki on. No. Oh, somebody's watching the flights. Somebody doing that flight tracker again. Dan Mullen was in Coral Gables today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they watching them planes hard, ain't they? All right. Let's see. What's, what's the wiki on him? Yeah, it was UNLV. So, where's the wiki? There's the wiki. Wikipedia, Mr. Marcus. Um, born in 1980. <laughs> 1980 don't hit like it used to. Um, playing career, he played at San Jose State. Position, he was a quarterback. Okay. Play quarterback. Um, as far as coaching career, um, so started at San Jose as, um, I guess undergrad assistant, um, Perry View, he was an offensive coordinator, went back to San Jose State as a grad assistant, then got moved to quarterbacks, then got, um, San Jose again as 
quarterback slash um, offensive coordinator. 2010, he was a uh, went to Wyoming. You know, quarterback coach, offensive coordinator. Then 2011, quarterbacks coach. 2012. Um, PGC, I don't know what that is, quarterback coach, um, passing game coordinator. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what the PGC is. Um, then I don't want this guy. I don't want him. I don't want him. And I say that for one reason. If you're looking at his track record, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, and all that, his position has changed everywhere ever since. He's not consistently anywhere. No, he hadn't stayed more than two seasons anywhere. Exactly. Other than San Jose from 05 to, like, 2008, that's, and that's only three, three, four seasons or whatever. Yeah. <coughs> that, uh, I, then he went to Cal 11 and, 11 and 12. Then he went to Southern Miss, 13. Then he was with Tampa Bay, um, 14. 15 and 16, Oklahoma State. 17, Oregon. He's been at Oregon for three seasons. And then two seasons at UNLV. This guy don't last more than two or three seasons. So, I don't know about that. His record as a head coach, 7 and 23. Where was he the head coach at? That's a, that's a question, too. Where did he – where was he a head coach? I don't see him listed as a head coach at any of these places. He's pretty much coached quarterbacks and been an offensive coordinator for a minute. So he definitely he, understands how to run a system. He was a high school head coach. Maybe that was it. Or he was a Pee Wee League head coach. Oh, okay. I mean, he would fit right in because, I mean, they will oh. fire him after a year anyway. Okay, so he was the head coach from 2020 to 2022 with UNLV, and he went seven and 23. So I don't know if I want this guy, man. Offense don't seem like it's clicking. <laughs> Out of 30 games, he won seven. His first year at UNLV, 0 and six. Second year, two and um, ten. This year, five and seven. So he has gradually improved. Yeah. I give him that much. From a 0 and 6 to a 5 and 7 in three seasons. So, I mean, and granted that it's UNLV. But uh, I don't know that guy. I don't know, man. I don't know. Y'all might be feeling him, but mm, I think probably better options out there. Like I said, I don't mind looking at, at somebody that's a failed head coach somewhere. Because, I mean, I know like a couple people in the comment section, and we did it earlier, brought up Dan Mullen. Listen, Dan Mullen, it, it, and, and actually Florida's done this a couple times with Dan Mullen and Will Muschamp. Both of them. Will Muschamp is an elite defensive mind. He's just not a good head coach. And same thing with Dan Mullen with the offense. I'd have either one of them run my offense or defense. I just wouldn't hire him as head coach. Any other coach in there y'all want to wiki? I see Scott Frost in there. All right, we're going to wiki Scott Frost. I mean, we pretty much know he's been at Nebraska for the last five seasons. Haven't done crap. He, he was the uh, 2017 national champion head coach at UCF. Yeah, he was at UCF for a minute. So, look, you know, we could skip Scott Frost. He's, he's well known. He's he's pretty much well known. Who's this Hank guy they talking about? Who's Hank? What's his real name? Leonard Hankerson. They they, they keep I, – I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. It's like when it comes to some people, I don't want somebody learning on the job here. But they're going to turn around and say hire Leonard Hankerson as the, as the offensive coordinator. And the man's never been an offensive coordinator before. You want um, Hank T2I? No. 
I don't want him. I want somebody with some proven body of work, somebody with a resume. If Len, if Frank, Lena Franklin, Lena Hankerson, I'm sorry, if he comes and he doesn't, you know, do what we expect, his, you might as well say his time as a cane might as well be um, deleted because <laughs> they're going to get on him. Now, if you hire him as a wide receiver coach, great. He's got a proven track record. I'd rather, that. I'd rather take um, Lamar Thomas as the um, wide receiver coach than I would um, Leonard Hankinson. And I know Lamar Thomas, he's he's interested in the position. So I don't think he's coaching anymore, is he? He he was he said he was down for it last year if he was given the opportunity. Well, I mean, I'm sure he would, but I mean, I would. I mean, if you're just going to hire somebody that's an ex-player with a proven resume, I'd go with Kevin Beard. See, Kevin Beard, I, I, I would bring him in, too. Yeah, Kevin Beard is, is another good option to me. Um, He's also Scott, considered an elite recruiter. Says Scott Frost is a um, dream. Yeah, I guess we'll look Kevin up Kevin Beard's Frost. got a lot of ties in South Florida, got a lot of connections in them seven-on-seven seven camps. Let's, you know what? Let's look up T. Martin. Cause that's a name that's been flushing around too. Oh yeah, I've heard that too, T. Martin. Let's see what the wiki on this Tennessee guy. I want to see you try and pronounce his first name. What is his first name? It should be in there somewhere. There it is. Oh, Tamaris. That's why they called him T, because nobody at Tennessee could pronounce his damn name. Uh, Tom Maurice. Yeah, Tom Maurice. That's his. Okay, see the jobs, career jobs, Pittsburgh, 2000, 2001. Oh, no, oh, somebody says Lamar Thomas got a job on an XFL team. So he did the Germany thing here. Um, then he was with the Eagles. Then he was with um, Oakland Raiders. Then uh, what is this? Canadian football team. So he's got professional now as far as college-wise and some more professional. Went to Morehouse, um, another high school, some high school, another high school. But how do you go from the NFL to high school like that? What was it? See, they don't have his job titles listed in these places. Well, that says as a player. He was with the Pittsburgh Steelers oh, as a player. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm delusional as hell right now in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so did a couple high schools. Then he went to New Mexico, quarterback coach, um, Kentucky wide receivers coach. Um, passing game coordinator and wide receiver coach at Kentucky. Um, USC wide receivers coach. USC um, passing game coordinator and wide receiver coach. USC again. So spent quite a few time at USC. Offensive coordinator, wide receivers coach in Tennessee from 2019 to 20. Assistant head coach and wide receiving coach. So this is a wide receivers coach, obviously. So I don't think they would probably bring him in as an offensive coordinator. They would bring him in as a wide receivers coach. And Which then, is funny considering he was a quarterback. You would think he would be a quarterback's coach. Yeah, so more than likely, if they bring him in, he'll be a wide receivers coach, and then they'll bring in somebody for a wide receiver slash quarterback. Not wide receiver, um, offensive coordinator slash quarterback. So... Oh, you know, as a player, he, he won the national championship with Tennessee in 1998. He was the, he was the quarterback of Tennessee right after uh, Peyton Manning left. In 1996, he was 11 and two. Then they dang, they dropped to four and six the next year. No, 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 no. This is um game stats. I'm I'm, I'm looking at this thing totally wrong. <laughs> I just want to give Tennessee some losses.
right. So, any other names y'all want to throw out there? Any other names? Let me see. Um, who else we got on here? Anybody else want to throw some names out there? Run through the wiki. You said Lamar is coaching in the new XFL. Okay. Um, if y'all throw names in there, put their whole name because if you say Haynes or Hines or whoever, I'm not going to know who that is. That's Hines Ward. He was a uh, he won a couple Super Bowls with the Steelers. Yeah, but yeah, they got to be Pacific because you know, pretending I'm a three year old and I don't know. Well, that's his name, Hines Ward. Yeah, I know who he is now, but. You know, I'm just saying, if you're going to put names in there, pretend like I don't know and put his whole name. I got you. Makes it, makes it a lot easier. Well, I don't go know to, his middle name. Go to Tampa and bring Chad Morse. Chad Morse. You familiar with Chad Morse? I don't stop. I mean, the name sounds familiar, but I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Right, let's see what they're talking about. Chad Morse. Um... I see the Razorbacks. Get his wiki. So Chad Morse coaching. Um, man, started in '94. High school, high school, high school, high school. Um, then he went to 2010. So started in college in 2010. That with Tulsa. Assistant head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks. Then he went to Clemson from 2011 to 14, offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks. 2007, 15 to 17, SMU. 2018 and to 19, uh, Arkansas, 20, Arbor. Then he went back to high school in um, South Florida, present as an analyst, offensive analyst. Now, overall head coaching job in college, he's 18 and 40. Uh, high school wise, he's 180 and 41. So that's Chad Morris. Um, somebody said Willie Tagger. <laughs> Willie Tagger. This is a bad. Willie Tagger. Do me a favor, please. Get Do me right a favor, here. please. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. Shit, I'm saying. You know what, Willie Taggart? Hell no. Hell no. And that's 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 mainly on some um on some trolling type stuff. They would have a field day if Willie Taggart get hired. Oh God. Uh, Shit, they would try having a field day if they hired Dan Mullen. I'd still take his ass. See, that's what I'm talking about. Shout out to um, Brother Jay Blaze. He throw the names out there. He, he don't just give me one. He give me a few. So let's run through some of these guys. Who we got here next? Um, Liam. Liam Cohen. Didn't have to look too far. His name pop up first. All right, Wiki. Let's bring up his Wiki. Um, career, Alabama Vapors as a player. So he, this is a guy that played played quite a while as a player. Well, he only played one year. What am I talking about? Um, as a coach, though, Browns quarterbacks coach, 2011 Rhode Island. Um, no, that, that's not the Browns. That's Brown University. Oh, Brown. Oh, wow. Okay, Brown University. <laughs> I thought it was the Browns. <laughs> uh, then he went back to, to Brown University from 2012 to 2013 as quarterback coach. Then he went to UMass 14 to 15, passing game coordinator, quarterback, quarterback coach. <laughs> then he went to Maine offense coordinator 16 through 17, Los Angeles Rams 18 through 17, Assistant wide receivers coach. Oh, don't hire him. We lost that year to Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kentucky 2021. 
offensive coordinator and uh, quarterbacks coach. Los Angeles Rams, 2020 offensive coordinator. Oh, don't hire him. We lost a whole bunch of crap this year. <laughs> I'm about to say, he just got hired at Tennessee, at, at Kentucky. Yeah, 2023 present um, offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach for Kentucky. So hiring a guy like this, we would have to literally buy out a contract that ain't even started yet. Uh, and, that man was, and that man had a terrible offense for the Rams. Yeah, we looked at terrible. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> We went from Super Bowl champs to Super Bowl. And um, who else was? Jake P. Let's do this Jake guy. All right, Jake Let's see. Oh, another Rams guy? Oh, man. No, and, and the Carolina Panthers? Nope. Oh, man. Born in 84, he's 38 years old. Um, born in Nebraska. Um, his current position is a Rams offensive assistant. Nope, don't hire him. <laughs> 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 All right, so as coach, um, Santa Barbara City um, College 2006, special teams coordinators, safety coach, and strength and conditioning coordinator. UCLA in two, 2007 as a defensive um, assistant. Jacksonville Jaguars 2012 assistant quarterbacks coach. Um, Alabama 2013 offensive analyst. Uh, Washington Redskins 14 um, offensive quality control coach. Raiders um, senior offensive assistant. And then the Raiders again assistant quarterbacks coach. Raiders again quarterbacks coach. Alabama 2018 offensive analyst, Carolina Panthers running backs coach, um, Carolina Panthers quarterbacks coach, 2021 LSU offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, Rams right now offensive arm assistant. He was also an executive for the Jacksonville Jaguars 2008 through 2021. He's got a lengthy resume. It was a part of the this. other one doesn't sound like he stays in one place for very long. Yeah, every year he's went somewhere different. Every year since, let me see, 2013 with Bama, 14 with Washington, 15 with um, Oakland. So he was at Oakland for three, three seasons. Then he went to Alabama again. Then the next year he went to Carolina. Then the next year, uh, two years with Carolina. Then the next year he went to LSU. Now he's been with the Rams since 2022. So a guy that likes to bounce around. I mean, granted that most most of the time, if you're successful as an offensive coordinator, you'll get opportunities elsewhere. You know. But this is not a guy that you would consider for the long term. Who else we got? Um, well, I'm not going to lie, too. Wait, wait until the end of January to fire Gaddis. Mario kind of shot himself in the foot. A lot of these coaching changes have already been made. All right, so James Coley. James Coley, this is a fan's favorite. This is a fan's favorite right here. So coaching – um, Miami senior, so high school, Miami, New Orleans high school, um, 2003 4, he went to LSU as a um, grad assist. Miami Dolphins, off, offensive assistant, um, 2017, he was at FIU, I mean, seven, he was at FIU for the offensive um, coordinator slash uh, quarterbacks coach. Florida State, 2000. Nine and eight, 2008 through nine, he was a tight ends coach. Um, RC, what's RC? Uh, run game coordinator. Okay. Um, Florida State again, offensive coordinator slash tight end in 2010 through 2012. So they got rid of him and they finally won a championship. Hmm, simple. Hmm. 2013 through 15, Miami Hurricanes. Um, Offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach, then went to Georgia for the three seasons, 
started as a wide receivers coach, moved to the um, co-offensive coordinator wide, um, quarterback, then got moved into just offensive coordinator quarterback, so leveled up a little bit. Texas A&M 2020-2021 tight ends coach and Texas A&M wide receivers coach. Now they can keep them. They can keep them. I don't need, we don't need that Texas A&M um, culture over here in Miami. We don't need that. Um, oh, shit, we lost Slim. The link's in the chat. Definitely don't need that. <laughs> James Coley can stay where he is. <laughs> we don't need that Texas A&M culture. culture. That's just my opinion, though. <laughs> we did T. Martin. Um, Kevin Beard. I've been hearing that name a lot. All right. So, Kevin Beard. Let's see. Where is his wiki? Let's see. So, Kevin Beard, career as um, coach, um, University of Miami in 2014, Miami in um, 2015, wide receivers, um, passing game coordinator. Then he went to Georgia, um, off OQC, what's that? Um, I know it's quarterback coach, but with the O in front of it, eh, whatever. Um, Tennessee wide receiver coach 2017, and he's been at Toledo as, um, I guess, a run game coordinator since 2018 to present. So, okay. So, as a wide receiving coach, bringing him as a wide receiving coach, that, that makes sense to me. I uh, just seen another name on here. Somebody put out another name. Um, somebody say Willie, Willie Corn. All right, got you. Let's see. Let's run. Let's run Willie Corn. So it's corn with a K. So Willie Corn. What's the wiki on Willie Corn? Playing career, Clemson, um, Northville, and that's it. Okay, so he played 2011 last time playing. Now as a coach, Charleston Southern, um, Charleston Southern, Coastal Carolina, 17 through 18 wide receivers, 2019 through 22 Coastal Carolina um, co-offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, and now present Liberty. So it looks like he just got with Liberty. He's going to be the co-offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach at Liberty. So this is a buy out the career, buy out the contract kind of guy if they want to bring him in. Any other name? I, I knew I seen another name in your um there it is. Brian Brian Elvis. Let's see. Elvis. Brian Ellis. Brian Ellis. All right, let's let's see his wiki real quick. All right, coaching career. Um, UAD grad assistant, 2014. Um, Western Kentucky, offensive um coordinator slash um quarterbacks coach. 2015 Western Kentucky running backs, 2016 Western Kentucky uh, pass game coordinator slash wide receivers. USC is an um, 
offensive assistant, USC quarterbacks coach that 2018. Um, went back to West West um, Western Kentucky, offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach. That's from 2019 to 20. Then 21, he was the co-offensive coordinator slash wide receivers coach. And present, he's at Georgia Southern as the offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach. So you guys throwing out some names, not not no big splashy name or whatever, but nonetheless, um, anybody else got any other name before I wrap up this live that y'all want to um, talk about? Uh, Demetrius, what's going on with your boss? Uh, what up, Tito? How you doing? Right? Yeah, I'm good, boss. Um, recruiting wise, Miami's doing pretty well. We're just trying to wrap up on some of the the, the, the recruits that hasn't committed yet. Um, speedster athlete, um, Harbor, Harbor. He's supposed to make his decision pretty soon. Um, transfer portal. We we did pretty decent in there. I think we're still probably going to try to get a wide receiver. If not, then, you know, spring, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the spring. Anyways, guys, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe. Um, yeah, that's it. Everybody, good night. Y'all have a good night. Go Canes.